Hello folks, welcome back. We are looking at the second match played in the Players' Cup Regional Qualifiers stream week one. This is round two of the winner's bracket for Europe. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's jump right in. All right, so we have Miguel Marti de la Torre and Giacomo Carniti up against each other from Europe, both in the winner's bracket. From Giacomo, we see Whimsicott and Ndidi coming out, and from Miguel, we see Lapras and Whimsicott. So both players are trying to go for a tailwind here. We see Psychic Terrain gets set up from Ndidi. Uh, now, it's Ndidi does have the potential to follow me from Giacomo to keep that Whimsicott at full. Uh, it's likely that Whimsicott has Focus Sash. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we see Lapras here has Blizzard, Thunder, and Hydro Pump. Uh, as well as protect so if lapras does dynamax here which it does uh it could, it might be going for gmax resonance here setting up those screens is going to be important uh and there's nothing really on the field that can threaten it right now uh but at the same time as we see here giacomo is maybe thinking about either switching or is just thinking about what pokemon he has in the back we see here that the uh, GMAX Resonance is going into Whimsicott, and, a potent and it looks like Miguel is considering the Tailwind click here, understandably so. As we said, Giacomo could be going for uh, Follow Me here to keep the Whimsicott alive and above the Sash. We see the Dynamax here. It's unlikely that we're going to see a Dynamax out of either of Giacomo's Pokemon on this turn, as they're not Pokemon that tend to Dynamax. Now, Indeedee can, with its expanding force, do a ton of damage, but against this Lapras, and, and this Lapras might be pretty, might isn't exactly the fastest, and Didi has a chance of getting it off. It's gonna depend on whose Whimsicott moves first. We see Giacomo's Whimsicott does move first. No follow me out of, no follow me out of the Ndidi. Uh, and here we see Tailwind come, oh wow. Oh, of course, because of Prankster. And there we see the expanding force. Uh, Miguel's Whimsicott does survive on, the, and it has escape button, not focus sash, but just barely survives that expanding force. We see not too much damage was taken by Lapras. Rillaboom comes out, resetting the terrain, which is going to be a huge benefit for Miguel. Uh, this indeed pretty much is almost going to be priced into switching out, perhaps into something that can either take a grassy glide or will just give Giacomo a chance to reset the psychic terrain. Uh, and here, there comes and Whimsicott is not focused Sash from Giacomo's side, so we can understand that perhaps this was eject button. Screens get set up that Aurora Veil. And one thing to remember about this, both players can see each other's teams, not the four that they bring, but can see each other's teams, moves, sets, and items, which absolutely is, uh, is going to be key in their decision making. And here we see, of course, that healing from the grassy terrain is pretty big. Cinderace gets sent out, can do a good chunk of damage to Lapras, uh, but unless it has Brick Break, those screens are staying up. So Giacomo has a couple of options here, as we said, so Whimsicott is down. Now, as we said, uh, Indeedee has the option to switch out into whatever the fourth Pokemon is maybe trying to reset that terrain. However, with Cinderace up, perhaps, uh, with Cinderace up, Rillaboom and Lapras are both threatened. Cinderace is an extremely first style Pokemon. Have, can, has the option to have moves like Iron Head, Pyro Ball, Bounce, all of these moves, and uh, they can certainly do damage to these other Pokemon, as well as Max Fighting. Uh, and here we see Alakazam comes out, so we do know J.E. Koma has a little bit of that Psy spam action going on. Indeed, he will likely be coming out uh, after perhaps Cinderace goes down or might switch in for Alakazam. It's it's very likely that Alakazam has the Focus Sash, but we will have to see. Cinderace does G-Max here. Now, there's no chance of Sun going up, but there's a very good chance of a speed boost from Max flying coming out of Cinderace. And uh, let's see the animation here, and it's a Max Knuckle instead going to the Lapras, does a good chunk of damage, those screens definitely save it. Cinderace gets an attack boost though, Somebody's now somebody's going to be taking a Grassy Glide, most certainly. And we see here that Cinderace is Life Orb, that definitely kind of makes sense with the amount of damage it did. Grassy Glide comes out, and Alakazam goes down, no Focus Sash to save it. You almost have to wonder, if the Life Orb is on Cinderace and there's no Focus Sash on Alakazam, where is the Focus Sash on Giacomo's team, if they even have one? 
Hawlucha, we see here Hawlucha coming out with a grassy seed. That's definitely going to be a big boost. We see that seed gets eaten up. Stats rise. And max water, max geyser coming out into the Cinderace. It's going to do a good chunk of damage. It does a plenty amount of damage for Cinderace being fighting type. Uh, and sets up the rain for Max Geysers in the future. We see Life Orb Lapras, something that has been a lot more common in Series 5 alongside Weakness Policy Lapras. Uh, so, the grassy terrain healing kind of offsetting the Life Orb recoil for both of these Max Pokemon. But now we see Indeedee coming out, second terrain getting set up. Now, Miguel still has four Pokemon. Rillaboom is still in the back, could just come out right now to neuter any expanding force damage that comes out of this Ndidi. When we saw before, it did a ton, it did plenty of damage to Lapras and is going to do even more to Hawlucha. Now, Hawlucha is super, super quick, right? And so it could absolutely do plenty of damage to this max, to this currently fighting Cinderace due to Libero. And here we go, we see that in. This Cinderace has a good chance of going down. Acrobatics comes out. It doesn't have an item because it ate, it consumed its seed, so its attack is boost, so its acrobatics damage is doubled. Cinderace goes down only one good turn of Dynamax out of Giacomo. And there we go, we see the expanding force. Halucha just survives, and Lapras again, thanks to those screens, which are only gonna be up for another turn or two, stays up. Now we see Indeedee going down once again no focus sash to speak of and that's all for Giacomo's Pokemon that was a almost clinical game uh, Miguel did not even lose a single Pokemon uh, their Whimsicott went down pretty low but as we saw Lapras with that G Max resonance does so much for uh, one it does plenty of damage but two that Aurora Veil is so clutch. We saw the max fighting from Cinderace, likely might have killed without the Aurora Veil up, didn't quite do it, and we saw the expanding force from Ndidi. On the first hit, it did almost a third of Lapras's health, and then on the second hit, it did literally half that, which is phenomenal. So if Miguel can just go in, use Lapras again, good to go, and is gonna have to figure out a way to keep it from setting up that to keep it from setting up with G Max Resonance. All right, so with that, let us whoop, let us get in the game two. All right, so let's see what adjustments Giacomo makes. This time sends out Toxtricity. Now Toxtricity can do a good chunk of damage to Lapras here. Uh, with electric type moves like overdrive, it is not the it's the uh, it's not the amped up version, so it its stats are a little bit uh, its attack stats are a little bit lower. Um, but we see Lapras here almost considering the protect, which is definitely a is something to consider. Uh, I believe this is a taunt coming out of Whimsicott into the Toxtricity. Uh, now Giacomo this time, unlike in the previous game, Toxtricity is certainly a Pokemon that can Dynamax, or Gigantamax in this case. And Toxicity is a Pokemon that does have plenty of potential and can do a ton of damage uh, with paralyzing and poisoning and or poisoning targets uh, with its G Gigantamax move. And here we see Giacomo right off the bat. Here comes the Dynamax once again. I am assuming it is the Toxicity. And there we go. We see it come out, but it's only Dynamax. No Gigantamax, only Dynamax. Maybe it likes the Lightning Turn. Maybe Giacomo was thinking, hey, you know what? There's all this terrain around. The Lightning Train could be huge, and it does prevent sleep, which is important. Now, if Miguel brought Rillaboom, this might be a smart move. Uh, it'll either it'll either tempt Miguel to bring Rillaboom out a little earlier than they wanted to in the beginning, but uh, we see the Taunt here coming into... I honestly don't know what that was. Uh, perhaps it was a mental herb and taunt had no effect. But um, as we see here, not too much damage through protect, but we, electric train does get set up, preventing any sleeps that might come out from either team. Although we know Miguel doesn't really have any Pokemon that are relying on that. Here we see a Tyranitar potentially coming out. That could most certainly 
be effective. There's not many moves that Toxicity can use that are going to be effective against Tyranitar. Uh, and even if it does, that weakness policy is certainly threatening. And with Tyranitar's bulk, it'll be hard to take down. Here we see Miguel's Whimsicott going for Tailwind. Now that it already has a taunt up on Toxicity, uh, at the very least meaning it can't protect, which is relatively important. So... We see Miguel thinking really hard about this Tailwind. I think it is definitely a smart move to make. It will speed up Tyranitar for the rest of the game. We see Giacomo switching out their Whimsicott into Cinderace after their Whimsicott has already pretty much done its job. And now Cinderace, very, very threatening to this Tyranitar with a fighting move in its arsenal of high jump kick that could definitely do plenty of damage. Now Miguel might have been able to EV Tyranitar to survive a max fighting but with how powerful high jump kick is that's going to be very very difficult miguel's tailwind does get off but cinderace is most likely going to be fast with gcam with giacomo's tailwind set up on its own and here we see half of tyranitar's health is taken out it's going to be pretty easily dealt with by either an iron head or high jump kick out of cinderace uh, and we see the chip damage coming out now we know Tyranitar with now we know Whimsicott doesn't have a focus sash, it does have a jack button, which is a pretty smart move in team building. As since Miguel also has Tyranitar, if Tyranitar and Whimsicott were ever out on the field together, like now, if Whimsicott had Focus Sash, Sand would break the Focus Sash. This is a this is a pretty smart move in team building. It's not, you know, it's not the most galaxy brain thing, but not everybody thinks about that when putting Pokemon on their team and putting and slapping a focus sash on Whimsicott is often the first thing people think about, but the eject button is super smart here, works with the rest of the team. The Whimsicott seems relatively bulky compared to others. Uh, here we see the Tyranitar, considering Dynamaxing, going for a max darkness into the Cinderace, and we see Whimsicott going for Protect. So Toxtricity could be doing a couple things here. Uh, I It is likely we will still be seeing a G max Lightning again, just to kind of cover the option of Rillaboom coming in and setting up the grassy terrain, as Giacomo definitely doesn't want that. But Miguel's being pretty smart, keeping Rillaboom in the back, not bringing it out until Toxtricity is down, and Miguel can almost can pretty much guarantee the grassy terrain will stay up for the remainder of the game. Uh, we could also see a max Ooze coming out into the Whimsicott slot. It likely won't KO with the current uh, with the current Protect up, even though and max Ooze is a little bit weaker than other max moves. But here we see, once again, Max Lightning coming out. It's going to do a good chunk of damage to Tyranitar, but as we see with the Dynamax, it does survive. Here we see the Max Darkness. The Tailwind does, makes Tyranitar faster. Cinderace holds on by a thread. It's likely going to be going down to Sand. We'll see if it targeted the Tyranitar or if it targeted the Whimsicott. Oh, and the Sand's already going out. I perhaps missed the Cinderace move. It likely attacked into the Whimsicott. And the Protect definitely uh, kept it up there. Uh, and since Cinderace used Iron Head, that's likely why it didn't take any damage from Sand, which is relatively important. So here we see Whimsicott is going to be faster. The Cinderace is going to likely go down. Whimsicott is a very fast Pokemon. Max Guard comes out of Tyranitar. Tyranitar did protect itself. And the Daz a Moon Blast comes out into Toxtricity. Not very effective thanks to Toxtricity's poison typing. But Toxtricity has an escape button. Interesting item there. I, I do have to wonder what item does Giacomo's Whimsicott have? No eject button, no sa uh, no focus sash. Perhaps it's safety goggles, but uh, that wouldn't make too much sense as it is a grass type. So. We'll have to see what it does have. So we see, and we see Giacomo Cinderace looks like it attacked into Tyranitar, didn't get the KO. Uh, and which is kind of one thing where it's like, if you're targeting Whimsicott and it protects, you might want to try to go into it a second time. Uh, because if it was going, if, if you wanted to go down on one turn, you likely want to go down on another. And if it, if, and it's going to be easier to ensure that you're not going to get blocked by protect. Uh, and if this Tyranitar is staying up, it's staying up. It's already wasted, it's already been two turns of max moves. It's still not, it still hasn't taken a KO. Cinderace is super, super weak, but thanks to Iron Head, it isn't dying to sand. Now, Giacomo is pretty priced into 
keeping Cinderace as a Steel type, but that's not too much of an issue right now with three of Miguel's Pokemon being weak to Iron Head. Here we finally see the Iron Head coming out. Miguel's Whimsicott does go down, uh, but Tyranitar is not protecting, could be going into the Cinderace here. Oh, but Cinderace dies from Life Orb Recoil. So just one attack off and that's it for it. Max Rock comes out into Whimsicott, does a ton of damage, but Whimsicott manages to survive. It also has an escape button. Well, that is interesting. Perhaps uh, due to the language barrier, I'm slightly confused as to what item Toxtricity has. But it seemed like it also had an escape button. Well, you know what? Perhaps there's two items that do the same thing here. Interesting. Uh, Sand getting in that ship damage on Toxtricity is likely likely has is going to have a bit of an effect here. Rillaboom comes out. Uh, not exactly the most favorable matchup against Toxtricity, but Rillaboom has access to moves like Fake Out, uh, which is definitely going to keep that stalled for a little bit, or it can just take out Whimsicott right off the bat here. And Toxtricity versus Tyranitar, as we said before, is not a great matchup. Here we finally see Grassy Terrain comes out, which is going to buff up Rillaboom. As we said, Miguel was did wait until Toxtricity's Dynamax was out of the way, made sure Cinderace was gone before bringing Rillaboom in, playing it super, super safe around this Pokemon that is going to be pretty key to victory. Rillaboom is phenomenal. We see here, it looks like Fake Out, U-Turn, Knock Off, and Grassy Glide. Fake Out coming out here, considering taking out Whimsicott, but Toxtricity is likely the more important Pokemon to deal with. And if Whimsicott does Moonblast in the Tyranitar, Tyranitar does have a chance of surviving depending on how Whimsicott is EV'd. It looks like it's more EV'd for bulk and likely speed, and perhaps not as much into special attack. Now, Whimsicott, uh, again, Whimsicott's Moonblast into Tyranitar would trigger weakness policy and raise its attack, but and Whimsicott will be dying to sand. But Whimsicott switches out here, revealing Geekoma's last Pokemon as Indeedy. So, in covering terrain options in multiple ways, Psychic Terrain comes out, any Grassy Glide out of, or any Grassy Glides out of Rillaboom moving forward are going to have to happen after a switch. But Psychic Terrain prevents the fake out. Here we see Sludge Bomb coming out into the Rillaboom doing plenty of damage and the poison could be big here. There's no grassy terrain to set to uh, offset the poison. We see Rock Slide come out. We see just how strong Tyranitar is. Uh, Toxtricity goes down and Didi takes a ton of damage. But Sand finally fades. So Whimsicott can switch in and be relatively safe. Uh, but now it's just an Indeedy and a Whimsicott kind of versus the world here. Rillaboom, Lapras, and Tyranitar are all very bulky, powerful Pokemon, but they are all weak. There's a chance that Indeedy, with its expanding force, could take this. And uh, a Rillaboom, like Rillaboom switching out here, or I'm sorry, Tyranitar is switching out here into Lapras, and uh, that could be big, saving Tyranitar for in like now, because Indeedee's expanding force doesn't actually do anything to Tyranitar. Uh, there's a consideration of perhaps keeping Tyranitar in, going for a protect, and trying to use something else to KO the Indeedee. But Tyranitar switching out and switching back in does give Miguel the option to set the sand back up, which will just take out Whimsicott. And Indeedee likely doesn't have another attack outside of expanding force. Uh, Instead, we, yep, and as we see here, Expanding Force takes out both Lapras and Rillaboom. Tyranitar comes back in. It has a pretty good chance of 1v2ing this. As we said, Whimsicott does likely die from sand on this next turn. And Indeedee, it's going to struggle to kill if it only has Expanding Force. Now, Whimsicott likely is faster than Tyranitar. And, a, and if a Moonblast kills it, then that's going to be the game. But if it doesn't, then Miguel is in a phenomenal spot. We see the Protect here. That's extremely smart. Now, the Whimsicott, once again, will likely die to Sand. And if it does, Tyranitar should have absolutely no problem taking this Indeedee. It's extremely rare to see Indeedees run anything more than just Expanding Force. Occasionally, they may run something like a Dazzling Gleam, but... Uh, that's usually saved for Hatterene, and as we saw, Giacomo does have Alakazam acting as more of the, and we see Alakazam acting as more of the powerhouse in the side spam combo, but there is no Alakazam here. Whimsicott goes down, and now it's only a matter of time before Miguel will win. We saw Ndidi try to use Expanding Force again, but it is not going to matter. 
And with that, second game a little bit closer, but Miguel still manages to take the win. So that was a very interesting game. Game one, we saw the power of Gigantamax Lapras. In the second game, we kind of saw the little bit like the terrain wars that were going on between Toxtricity, and we we saw that Jiko didn't opt for Gigantamax Toxtricity, but instead Dynamax Toxtricity, which does allow him to set up electric terrain and kind of counter any any Rillaboom's that come out trying to set up their own grassy terrain. And it worked for a little bit. It kept Rillaboom off the field. Uh, but once Toxtricity's Dynamax went down, Gikomo also had an Ndidi, an, an Ndidi to kind of back that up. But the Tyranitar in that second game was huge. Ndidi just couldn't touch it, and the Sand took out Whimsicott no problem. And it priced Cinderace into staying uh, as a Steel type instead of trying to do literally anything else. Uh, absolutely phenomenal game, phenomenal play by both players, especially Miguel. Uh, going 2-0 in this set. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll be back with the third game of the Players' Cup Regionals Qualifier Week 1 stream tomorrow. Be safe, be smart, make wise decisions, and have a good day.